As we explore financial accounting, I really like to go beyond recording transactions. I mean, it's one thing to take a look at the bookkeeping to understand what's happening behind the scenes, but I really want students to be users of financial information, to understand how to use the results from the financial statements to make decisions about a company. Remember, the financial statements are supposed to give us information about future cash flows. How much, how likely, and when. Keep this in the back of your minds and try to find ways to use this information to make decisions. One of the things we can do with inventory analysis, now these are not the only metrics available for analyzing a company's inventory and inventory related activities, uh, but they are arguably two of the most common. And these are inventory turnover ratio, and even though it goes by different names, sometimes what I would call the average holding period. In other words, on average, how many days do you hold on to your inventory before you actually sell it to your customers? Because there is this cycle. Companies purchase inventory, then they sell it, then they purchase some more, then they sell it, and they purchase some more, and then they sell it. And you guys don't need me to do that again. You understand what's going on there. Now the reality is, it's not, it's not like this, but it's as if this ha happens. It's like, let's say we have this baseline, there's no inventory, and we purchase some inventory. Then we sell it, and we completely deplete our inventory. So we purchase some more, sell it, purchase some more, sell it again. Well, that's an extreme example, because we probably wouldn't completely deplete our inventory down to zero. Every company is going to want some level of safety stock just so that they don't run out of inventory. I mean, what if you go to the grocery store and you're trying to buy a loaf of bread and they're out of bread, they can't sell you that bread. So we're, we're probably not gonna let the inventory levels go down to zero, but you can imagine that happening as you think about inventory turnover ratio because really what we're saying is how many times per year would we completely deplete our inventory, replenish it, deplete again, replenish, deplete again, and maybe replenish again. How many times would that happen if we did do that? Let me give you an extreme example here. Because the inventory turnover ratio is, is one metric. In other words, how many times per year do we do this gymnastics, these somersaults of buying and selling things? But we can take that turnover ratio right here and we can divide it into the number of days in a year to get a sense for the average holding period. In other words, how long did we hold on to our inventory? Let me give you two extreme examples. Let's pretend that our inventory turnover ratio was this extreme. It was 1.0, okay? So if your inventory turnover ratio were 1.0, that means you turn your inventory over one time per year. This happens once a year. That means your average holding period would be 365 days. A very extreme example, and you could probably imagine for a lot of businesses, that's undesirable. I mean, would you really like to purchase something, hold it in inventory for 365 days, and then eventually sell it to your customers? I don't think so. Uh, what you're seeing here is you want the average holding period to be as low as reasonably possible. Because you see, inventory, I mean, inventory is actually undesirable for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's desirable because if you have inventory and it's available, you can sell it to your customers. But there are a lot of reasons that companies try to minimize their inventory balances. You have to purchase the inventory. You have to pay for it. You have to store it somewhere. You have to keep it safe. You probably, you may have to put insurance on that inventory. There's always a risk that it could be lost, stolen, uh, it could become obsolete. If it's, if it's a fashion item, it might become unfashionable. Uh, if it's perishable foods, it could spoil. Uh, at the end of a period, especially if you're using the periodic inventory method, you have to count it. You may have to move it around. There are all sorts of problems with inventory, but we still need it. It's this necessary evil. Even though we may prefer not to have to pay for it and have all these hassles, what we do want to we, we want to at least minimize, controlling our inventory. So this extreme example, if your inventory turnover ratio is 1.0, that means you hold on to that inventory for 365 days, right? Not desirable for a lot of businesses. Let's take a look at the other extreme. What if your inventory turnover ratio were 365.0? In other words, this purchase, 
deplete, purchase deplete, purchase deplete cycle happens 365 times in a year. It's also probably unrealistic for a lot of businesses because what that means is on average, uh, in fact, I can't even pluralize it. It's just one day. On average, we would hold on to our inventory for one day, sell it, and then have to replenish. Um, granted, that's a, that's a lot less hassle. I mean, we would, I would rather have an uh, average holding period of one day instead of 365 days. I just don't know how realistic that is. Maybe for your sushi restaurants or something like that, that would make sense. So let's put both of these concepts uh, into action by looking at both Under Armour and Lululemon. Now, for Under Armour, and I know this may be a little bit small, hopefully you've got this video on full screen, uh, but let's take a look at the inventory turnover ratio formula. And I'd like to point this out. We're gonna look at a lot of different turnover ratios as we explore accounts receivable and other areas of the financial statements. And what you'll see is that turnover ratios often have an income statement measure as one component and a balance sheet measure as the other. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Okay, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Now, for this class, you can assume that an average is going to be beginning plus ending divided by two. So what I'm seeing here for Under Armour is that their beginning inventory is uh, that 1.2 billion we've seen before. Let me put this down here. So the beginning inventory for Under Armour, um, oh, I miswrote that, but that's okay. We can just erase this. That's the wonderful thing about erasers. And so let's write it the right way. Sometimes I re-record those, but it's good to know that your instructor's human, right? Okay, so that was our beginning inventory for Under Armour. In other words, the balance sheet at the end of 2017, and here's our ending inventory for Under Armour, balance sheet at the end of 2018, and the average inventory is simply gonna be um, these two items combined, and I'm gonna have to write that down here, but one billion, $89 million is the average inventory for Under Armour. That's what's going to get plugged in right here. So let's just plug that in. 1089022. Now the cost of goods sold, that's the easy part. We're going to take a look for 2018 on the income statement. Their cost of goods sold is reported right there. We can plug that in here in the numerator. Cost of goods sold, 2.8 billion. Yeah, I guess I'm rounding a little bit, but you guys get the point. And now pull out your calculators and you'll see that the inventory turnover ratio for the year 2018, for this year right here, was 2.62 for Under Armour. What that means is on average, uh, Under Armour uh, cycled through its inventory 2.6 times during the year of 2018. If you're like me, Sometimes um, you might want to express things in terms of days instead of a turnover ratio. So let's just do that. I mean, we calculated the inventory turnover ratio as 2.62 for the year 2018 for Under Armour. What does that mean in terms of days? Well, simply take the turnover ratio, divide it into the number of days in a calendar year, and what you're going to see here is that Under Armour, on average, held its inventory for 139 days. What that's telling you is that on average, merchandise hung around for 139 days before Under Armour was able to sell it to its customers. You've gotten the sense now that not only is it good to look at the financial performance of an individual company, but we can draw insights by looking at benchmarks, industry norms, the performance of competitors. So as we take a look at Under Armour's inventory metrics, let's also take a look at Lululemon's for a similar time period. Now it's not going to be the exact same time period as we know Lululemon uses these fiscal years, right? Ended January of 2017, January of 2018, February of 2019. Um, but we can get an approximation. We're in, the, we're in the ballpark here. I've taken the liberty of giving you the beginning and the ending inventory amounts for Lululemon, okay? Uh, this was the end of the previous fiscal year, which is the beginning of the current fiscal year. And this is the end of the current fiscal year. The average of those two amounts is 367 million and some change. Now we can take a look at cost of goods sold off of the 
income statement for the period ended February 3 of 2019. And then we simply take the um, cost of goods sold, 1 million, or actually 1 billion, 472 million, divide by the average inventory that we identified and measured up here. And we see that the inventory turnover ratio is 4.01. What that means is that Lululemon, on average, is cycling through its inventory four times per year. Now, if you want to express that in terms of days, the average holding period, all you have to do is take your inventory turnover ratio, divide it into the number of days in the year, 4.01, 4.0, it won't be materially different. And we see that, on average, Lululemon held onto its inventory for 91 days for this particular fiscal year before it was able to sell the items to customers. Let's compare the two companies side by side. Remember Under Armour had the inventory turnover ratio 2.62, 2.62 times per year. Uh, and that translated to 139 days on average was the holding period for the inventory. Well, you can see, and, and I really like this because it illustrates that with inventory turnover ratio, higher is better, okay? Sometimes uh, students struggle with Okay, I can, I can do the calculation, but what does it mean? Well, just think about the turnover ratio as putting your foot on the accelerator in your car, putting the gas pedal down. Higher is better. You're cycling through the inventory. Uh, if it helps, think about your favorite restaurant. Um, I enjoy sushi, and I really hope that they are cycling through that inventory very quickly because I want the freshest sashimi. I don't want stuff that's been hanging around for a long time. So higher is better. We're cycling through that inventory. Remember, the longer that that inventory stays on hand, the more likely that it becomes obsolete, stolen, spoiled, that we may have to continue financing it, counting it, moving it around, all those awful things. So you see a higher inventory turnover ratio translates to a lower number of days for the average holding period, right? Lululemon's turnover ratio of 4.01, much higher than 2.6, and that translates to fewer days, which is more favorable. It's important to also consider the industry. I know we've been dealing with um, retail athletics apparel, Under Armour and Lululemon, but think about different kinds of uh, stores. Uh, a perishable food store like a fruit market or a butcher, a bakery, they may have an in inventory holding period something like a week or two, seven to 14 days, maybe for some even, even lower uh, number of days. Uh, take that at a department store. You know, these are things that are not perishable. They might be somewhat seasonal, I suppose. Uh, they could be um, uh, also items that could potentially go out of style or become obsolete, but they're not perishable. So maybe the holding period is longer. Then take a seasonal retail store. Um, that could be like a sporting goods store uh, or think about like a ski shop, you know, something where uh, there's maybe even a longer cycle and their holding period could be even longer, 90 to 100 days. So it is important to take a look at the industry and to look at financial statement metrics in context, not only to what we've seen with the company's performance in the past, but also to the industry in which the company operates. Finally, we can take a look at some trends within the same company. Now this is Under Armour's inventory turnover ratio for 16, 17, and 18. I've I've done the uh, liberty of doing the calculations for you. If you really want an exercise, just go ahead and go on the internet, go to the investor relations portion of Under Armour's website and pull up their balance sheets for 2015 through 2018, their income statements for 2016 through 2018, and see if you can double check my work. Uh, but I've, given, I've done the calculations for you here. And what you can see is the inventory turnover ratio for Under Armour declined. Uh, over these three years, precipitously really from 16 to 17. And look what that did to the holding period. Um, remember, higher is better with the turnover ratio because that means fewer days. So as the turnover ratio became lower, the average holding period actually increased from 120 days to 139 days, which is not a favorable trend. Now, we'll have to see what happens. Um, maybe that's just a short-term excursion for the company. But what you can see is financial statements do tell stories. Let's take a look at these, these inventory statistics and go back to the multi-step income statement discussion. 
Remember when we were looking at Under Armour's multi-step income statement, how the gross profit dropped from 46.5% to just over 45%? It's probably not coincidental that that coincides, that timing coincides with a reduction in the inventory turnover ratio and an increase in the average holding period for their inventory. There's probably a relationship there. Obviously, we would need to do some more digging to figure out the true story that these financial statements are telling us. But what you are seeing is a confluence of events that is showing up in not only inventory metrics, but also in some of the profitability metrics for this company.